Hello everyone, my name is Teslin. In this tutorial, we look at the first topic of our C programming that is basic input and output that we properly refer to as IO operations. So what do you mean by input and output? Input is nothing but the data that we enter into the C program for the calculations we to perform. The data that needs to be entered is referred to as an input. And what the calculations are done by the program and what the data is to be displayed back to the user on the screen is referred to as the output. Okay? Traditionally, we enter the input to the keyboard and the output is displayed on the screen. Okay? So popularly, we use two functions that is a printf and scanf. Printf is basically used to display messages or results on the screen and scanf is a function that is used to accept data or values from the user to the keyboard. Both the functions are defined are defined in the stio.h header file that is standard input output header file. That is why we always include this header file as the first line in our C program. Without this header file, the printf and scanner functions will not work. Okay? So we first look at how to use a printf function. We include the standard input output header file. After that, we write down the first function, that is the main function, which is by default called the compile when the program is run. And we write printf C programming. So this particular program will just print the message C programming on the screen when you run it. So the printf function is used to display any text message or any calculations that we see later on the screen. In this particular example, it is showing you how to display a value on the screen. The previous one we checked how to display a simple message. This one is going to print a value. So we first declare a variable which will contain a hardcoded value of 5 and then we try to print that variable 5 on the screen. So how do we print an integer? Since this variable test integer is of type n which is uh, from 0 to 9, right? we have to use percent D. Now what is percent D? Percent D is referred to as the format specifier. Right? So there are different types of data types in C programming. The basic ones are integer, float and character, of course there are more, which we'll see later. Right? So first one that we look at is int, which is nothing but integer, then we just have float, which is for decimal fractional values, and we have character, that is scat, that is used to display my uh, alphabets. Right? So in order to display an integer value, an integer variable on the screen, we have to use percent d. So when you run this particular program, the output that you'll be seeing is nothing but number equal to 5, which is nothing but the value that is stored in the variable test integer. Now, after int, which is the first basic data type we look at, we look at further data types that is float and double. Right? Now, what do you mean by the float data type? Float data type is used to store values which are fractional in nature, right? which, are in the, which has uh, decimal values, fractional values that is stored in the float data type. Integer data type can only contain whole numbers. If you want to store fractional values, they have to be stored in your float data type. Right? Now, in this particular example, you see there are two data types that are used. We have float as well as double. Now, what is the exact difference between float and double? Float is referred to as a 32-bit single position floating point variable and double is a 64-bit double position floating point variable. Now, it sounds very confusing. Let us look at this example to understand the exact difference between float and double. Okay. Theoretically, float can store only up to six places up to the decimal point. If you're having a float variable, you can only store, it will print up to six values up to the decimal point. If you want to have more than six values up to the decimal point, more than six positions, float will not suffice. In that case, we have to start using double. And then again, further data types like long double, but that is uh, not on our scope right now. So in this particular example, we have taken two variables, x, which is of type float, and we take it to y, which is of type double, right? Both the numbers are the same, the fractional number, that is 5.12567889. That same number is stored in both variables x and y. So the values stored in x and y are having nine places up to the decimal point, right? Float x is having nine places over here. Similarly, so double y is also having nine places over here. Right? To print a floating point variable, the format specifier that we use is percent f. So when we print this particular statement, the value of x which is getting displayed will be nothing but 5.123457. Now from where does 7 come? First of all, if you notice, there are only six decimal places, positions up to the decimal point, right? So instead of six, by the seven point, that is a basic mass, this number is rounded up. Since it is greater than five, right? The six has been rounded up to seven, so we get one, two, three, four, five, seven. 
Now, if you actually want to display the entire number, you cannot use float because it is having more than six position points, right? So in that case, we come down to the double data type, which is again inbuilt, just like how in float is inbuilt in C programming, and in double is inbuilt in your compiler for C programming, right? So if you want to print the value, you start using LF, right? The format specifier for double is LF. Now, what is this point nine? I want to print nine decimal places. You have to specify how many decimal places you require. So I'm saying point 0.9 is nothing but when you get the output, you will notice that you are having all the nine decimal places over here. If I to write point 0.7 over here, what have been the output? The output have been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, right? Because of course, this number will get rounded off. So that is the difference between float and double. I'll repeat it once again. Float is 32-bit single position. That means it can store only about six decimal places after the decimal point and double is 64 bit double position variable. So, if you want to have a greater position, greater accuracy to the variables, you have to use double. In general purpose programming, in real life programming, you normally stick to the double data type because it can hold a more accurate result. Right? So, this was the first printer, the second printer. The next format is why you have to look at is your percent %e. Percent %e is not to get an exponential variable. If you look at this output, it's very clear to understand. For the exponential, it will store the output in an exponent format. That's the only difference between the percent e and the other plus specifiers. Okay? Now, the next data type, which is a very important data type that we have, is your character, referred to as a char in your C compiler. Okay? So, if you want to display alphabets like A, B, C, D, or in capital letters or even other special characters, you have to use the char data type. Right? So, declare a variable chr, any variable. We store the variable a. Now remember, whatever characters are storing, it has to be in single quotes. Otherwise, it will not work. Right? It will, it will not. Uh, it's not that it's a syntax error. It will be a logical error, which we will see later. Right? So in this output, when I'm saying trying to print the value of char of the chr, we'll be using the format specifiers percent c for character variables percent c. And as you can see in the output. In case of percent c, the value of this variable, for example, but a is getting printed over here. Right? So that's how we print character values in your C program. The next concept that we need to look at is how to accept values from the user. Right? Printf is to display results on the screen. Now we have scanf, which is again an inbuilt function in my standard in the header file. Scanf function is used to accept users through the keyboard. Right? We enter the values through the keyboard. So let us look at a simple example. We have a variable test integer. We are sending a message asking the user to enter and any random integer. Right? And let's say the user enters 7, right? Now, wherever that 7 gets stored, you want to store that variable 7, the value 7, into the variable test integer. So, how is that being done? We use a scanner function. Since 7 and this integer variable are both of type in, we have to use the format specifier as percent %d, right? Then we write m% test integer. Now, if you notice, for printf, we don't have m%, because for scanner, we do have m%. Why is this making a difference? That will understand when we look at pointers. For now, just remember, in the scanner function for the variables, we have to use the address of it, the percent symbol. Right? So whatever value the user will enter, that will get stored in this particular variable test integer. Right? So if you look at the next print of statement, we're trying to print the value of test integer using percent D format specifier. So if you look at the output, the user has entered the user had entered seven. So if I print the result of that test integer variable, we get the answer seven. The seven was stored into the variable test integer using the scanner function. Okay? Let us look at a little bit more complicated example. Over here, we are having two variables float num and double num2. Right? So, you are asking the user to enter a number. The first number user will be entering as your float variable. So, in order to store a floating point variable, you have to use percent f. Right? Address operator in num1 scanner function uses the address operator. While that will be more clear when we look at, when we look at pointers and functions. Right? Then again, we are putting print f, asking the user to enter another number. Is only a double position number, right? So both the floating number stored in num1 and the double uh, number is stored in the variable num2. So when you try to print the result, this one will print the floating point variable and so will print the double point variable. And here is the output that you get for that. Now, what do you mean by ASCII code? This ASCII code is required because we have characters in C programming, right? So, character variables are stored based on your ASCII value, right? So, ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. So, every character that you have in your C programming, it has a corresponding ASCII value. For example, for, char for capital A, its corresponding ASCII value is 65, right? Similarly, if you look at small A, since both of them are two different variables, 
they have two different ASCII values, right? So for small uh, weight, for small character A, the ASCII value is 97, and that goes up for small weight is 98, for small C weight is 92. So in my C compiler, whenever you're trying to store a particular a particular word, for example, blue, the words are stored using its corresponding ASCII value, which is stored in its uh, binary format, right? So this is the binary value of the ASCII value for what is capital B, that is 66, and for L, the ASCII value is taken up. And the binary format that is in the base state is stored. So this is how we basically store the data in C programming. This is just for understanding purpose. Okay. Now if you look at this particular example, it's good. this program is showing you the difference between my actual character and the ASCII value. Okay. So in this example, you're having a character variable chr. You pass the user to enter a character variable. Right. You use store that in the character variable using scanner. The format specified for this has to be percent C. Right. Now, when you try to print the value using percent %c, the output will be the character itself, right? Whereas, if you try to print it using percent %d, it gets typed faster. So, whatever is the ASCII value of this character entered by the user, for example, the user entered a, that is small a, the ASCII value of small a is 97. So, 97 is what is getting stored over here, right? So, this is another simple example that is how to accept multiple values from the keyboard. Right? If you want to accept two values from the user, you have to use two variables over here and two format specifiers. So, it will be a one to one correspondence. Right? So the first number, which is an integer, will be stored in A, and the second number, which is a stored in A, will be stored in the variable B. And you can print the result as per this one is called. Now let us look at a very simple program of how to add two integers, how to add two numbers in C programming. Right? The starting statements are very simple. You have to include the required header files, your main function, that is uh, main, right? Then you declare the variables that you require. Number one and number two is where you'll be storing the two numbers that the user will enter, and sum will contain the result. That is the sum, the addition of the two numbers, the number one and number two, right? So the user enters two numbers, that is number one and number two. If you want, you can put a printer statement before this, asking the user to enter the two numbers. Right? So the user will enter the first number here and the second number over here. Then you write down sum equal to number one plus number two. This is where the actual addition is happening. Right? And if you display the result, that is percent D plus percent D equal to percent D. The first number plus the second number is equal to the sum. Right? Similarly, a function, a program to find the product of two numbers will also be the same. You ask the user to enter two numbers, which is going A and B. You capture the product and using my double precision variable, you display the value of the product variable. So this is the output to run this code. Another program to understand the value of uh, how ASCII values are treated, right? You enter a character, right? That is going C. And when you try to print C, this one will print the actual value, the actual the character, and this one will print the corresponding ASCII value as shown in this particular output. And this is showing you one to one correspondence. If the first variable will be here, the second variable will be here. We notice the variables are the same, but the values are different because of the format specified. So let us look at a simple program of how to accept two numbers and find the division that is a portion and remainder of the reward and the divisor. Right? It's a very simple program. You can go through just like how we did the addition and the multiplication to perform the same division and quotient over here. Right? Now how did we get the quotient and dividend and remainder over here? That is basic maths, right? Quotient is calculated as given by divisor and remainder is something with the modulus result that is the answer that you get, the remainder that you get after performing the division. Now, what do you mean by size of uh, function? Uh, size of function is used to understand as an inbuilt function, right? It is used to understand how much of space is allotted to each of the data types, right? For example, for int, float, double, and care, the compiler allows different amount of space, right? And this is dependent on the compiler. Each computer will assign different amount of bytes for different data types, right? So if you want to find out what is the data type, the size of int, use the size of operation. If you want to find out the size of character, use the size of operation. For character, and we get the corresponding results over here. So now, just let us look at an algorithm and the corresponding program to swap the values of two numbers. Okay, an algorithm and a program to accept two numbers from a user and swap them. There are two cases over here. The first case is swapping using a temporary variable, and the second case is swapping without using a temporary variable. Okay? So the first program that we look at, the algorithm that we look at, is how to swap two numbers using a temporary variable. Okay. So, this is the algorithm 
that we follow that we have a fault to scrap to values using a temporary variable because we require three variables over here n1 and n2 of course you can name them as whatever you want right these are the two variables which will hold the numbers of that that we use so far and temp is a temporary variable which is used intermittently to do the scrap operation right so you also use it to enter the two values for n1 and n2 right from here is where the actual scrapping algorithm works the actual scrapping algorithm happens right so into your temporary variable store the value of n1 into your temporary variable right whatever value is there in n1 or whatever is there in n2 store that in n2 now whatever is there in n2 you move that into n1 right whatever value is stored over here at n2 you move that into the variable n1 and finally whatever is stored in the temp variable what is stored in temp variable the old value of n1 right whatever is there in n2 that value was stored in temp right so that value of temp you are moving it into your n2 variable so at the end of this operation n1 will not contain the value of n2 and n2 will not contain the value of n1 which is temporarily stored in this temp variable right so finally when you print the two outputs this will print the old value of n2 and this will print the old value of n1 in the swapped values right it looks very confusing initially but if you just go through it slowly and once again it will be very clear to you it's very simple algorithm right so this is the corresponding program for the algorithm we also use it to enter two numbers the first number and the second number the output is nothing but the scattering of the two numbers right so the second should come into first and whatever was there in this first should go into the variable second right so the first step is to store temporarily store the value of first in the temp variable right whatever was there in second you move that into first and whatever was stored in temp that's the old value of first you're moving that into the variable second so finally you are after scattering the first number will be the one that was entered over here into the second variable and the second number will now be the one that entered into the first variable so if you go on this code you will see that the two numbers the, the operation has been swapped next and the second part of this algorithm is to swap the two numbers without using a temporary variable now right to swap the numbers without using a temporary variable right now in this program this program will only work for integer for number values for number based variables right it will not work for anything else this will only work for your integer numbers right in this program we are not using any temporary value we are just using basic math principles over here right now this program works for us we're just using basic max principles right so let's say i have two values as a equal to 10 and b contains a value 20 which so i will swap these two numbers that is a should contain 20 and b should contain 10 after swapping operation right but in this program we are not using any temp variable so how is this operation now it is just simple max logic that we follow right so we say a equal to a plus b so value of a is 10 value of b is 20 so the new value of a will be now 13 right 10 plus 20 that is a plus b the so new value of a will contain the number 13 right Now next step is to say b equal to a minus b. Right? Now in this case, what is the value of a? The value of a was updated over here. Right? The value of a is now 30, and value of b was initially was 20, but was not changed. Right? So it's still the value of a minus b that is 30 minus 20. Right? So the value of b, the new value of b will now be equal to 10. After this operation, the value of b will be 10. Over here, the value of a was 30. Here, the value of b changed to 10. Right? And the third step is to say a equal to a minus b. What is the value of a? The value of a is 30. For the new value of b now, the new value of b in the second step is now 10. Right, so this is nothing but 30 minus 10, but that is the 20. So the value of a will now contain 20. Right, so here the stacking operations are completed. So after this step, you notice that a is now containing 20 and b is now containing 10. So the values have been swapped. So when you print the values of a and b, we get the value of a is 20 and the value of b as 10. So these were the two swapping algorithms using temp and without using temp.